the featherweight title contender space has long been occupied by one of the most dangerous submission artists in the sport. Blood and Guts fan favorite Brian T. City Ortega quite literally made a name for himself with his signature triangle choke and has proven to be a grappling threat to even the championship level opponents. However, the Gracie Jiu Jitsu black belt has thus far shown an inability to capture gold on two separate occasions, not to mention a talent for absorbing copious amounts of damage while in his supposed element. This raises the question, how good is Brian Ortega's grappling? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim and I'm going to be breaking down the grappling skills of Brian Ortega. In order to do that, I'm going to look at six key elements of grappling as they relate to the sport of MMA. For each category, I give a score based on a scale from 1 to 10, and then at the end of the video, I take the average of those scores to give an overall grade. I base this grade off my own observations of their most recent fights of relevance and the quality of the opponents that they have faced. Every fight begins standing, so let's go over takedown defense first. Now, it doesn't take any real analyzing to tell that Ortega is a submission wizard that has no qualms about being on the ground with someone. That fact in and of itself is a form of psychological takedown defense. Much like the way it is for Khabib Nurmagomedov, I alluded to this form of takedown defense in my video about his grappling. The differences in style between Brian and Khabib make this psychological defense much more prominent in Nurmagomedov's case though. I still believe it was at least a small key to his success over Frankie Edgar and Volkanovski. Fighters who usually make it a point to wrestle quite a bit in their fights. Unlike Khabib, there have been a fair amount of successful and unsuccessful takedowns that Ortega has had to deal with throughout his career. So let's take a look at Ortega's actual technique for this category. This is going to sound a bit obvious, but Ortega's biggest flaw when it comes to takedown defense is whether or not he actually chooses to defend it. As I mentioned moments ago, his willingness to engage in a battle on the ground can be a psychological takedown defense, but can also be a complete sabotage to it. Brian's comfort zone is his guard, and many times when he is threatened by a takedown, he simply falls to his back in order to ensure it ends up in that position. This quite literally assists the takedown, and for this reason, I will be taking some major points away for this category. There have been times when Ortega has chosen to keep the fight standing though, and from these examples, I've concluded that his overall technique isn't half bad. Stuffing single leg shots with relative ease, he has a solid sprawl, and tends to make his way to the cage for balance against the more stubborn attempts. He's even proven that he can shut down attempts from very strong wrestlers like Clay Guida. Brian's slick striking did have a bit to do with that success, particularly the threat of his uppercuts and knees. Chain wrestling and scrambling give him some trouble, but again, a lot of that is Ortega choosing to concede position. I'm curious of how much better the scrambling would look if you told him beforehand that he's not allowed to pull guard. T City's most important aspect of this skill set is without a doubt the threat of his front headlock chokes. As fighters shoot in on his legs and hips, he throws himself over their upper body and neck, immediately snatching up guillotines, darces, and anaconda chokes. Much like a featherweight Tony Ferguson, any little mistake or sloppy entry will lead to total strangulation. Running neck first into a total disaster is something that gives even the best wrestlers second thoughts. But let's face it, it's not an infallible defense, especially since it's a threat that can be completely bypassed with some more upright takedowns using judo or greco. We've seen Brian's opponents successfully initiate a feet to floor sequence often enough to know that he needs some work here. So I'm gonna give him the score of seven for takedown defense. Next is ground and pound defense. This is easily Brian's weakest area in my opinion. Simply put, Ortega is too damn tough for his own good. And whether we're talking about his ground game or his standing game, he's willing to take one to give one. This is simply just too big of a liability when it comes to the positions he finds himself in. T said he loves to lay in the guard and set up his excellent finishing attacks, but he relies on them to a fault. And guess what? When those attacks get shut down, you're stuck on the bottom getting smashed in the face. When he relies on those submissions, it leads to him spending more time in disadvantageous positions, 
The more time spent on the bottom, the more likely you're going to get hit. Brian's attacks are not limited to submissions though. When he's throwing ground and pound from the bottom, he of course leaves himself open to being hit himself. Don't get me wrong, when all of these things are done well and at the right time, they are actually an excellent deterrent against ground and pound. It's a way of distracting and hurting fighters that aren't careful enough with their own attacks, to the point that they either just stand up or make a mistake that costs them dearly. Ortega's problem is figuring out when is the right time to dial this back and just use more conservative striking defense. He has the ability to do it. Every once in a while you'll spot him controlling posture and grip fighting, and to Brian's credit, he's not getting beat on by nobodies. These are championship level, or at least top contender level athletes that have fantastic grapple boxing skills. So to be fair, the more traditional and basic striking defense aren't as effective against those types of fighters anyway. Getting back to the feet is a much more reliable way to negate ground and pound, but I just can't see Ortega utilizing this tactic now or even all that much in the future. A more realistic route to take is maybe he should put more emphasis on sweeps, which in my opinion is one of the best ways to counter ground strikes and would also play to his strength as a guard player. T-City has shown his skills in this area and while more traditional sweeps are in his arsenal, it's much more likely to see him get a sweep by virtue of a submission attempt that ends up off balancing an enemy. Despite all the damage he's absorbed, Ortega has never been finished in his career to date. That's important and certainly worth something, but he's come awfully close to losing the ability to make that boast. I would argue that he came the closest to being TKO'd while on the ground with Volkanovski. So a greater focus on reversals and sweeps could drastically improve his ground and pound defense. It's an enormous hole in his ground game. So I'm going to give him the score of 6.5 for ground and pound defense. Last order of business for defense is submission defense. This was most difficult to analyze simply because there wasn't much data to study. So take this section of the analysis with a pinch of salt. No one has even attempted a single submission on the Gracie Jiu Jitsu black belt in his entire 10 fight UFC career so far. At least not on paper. Probably because his reputation as a submission specialist was well established before he even made his way to the big show. It could also be that he just hasn't fought many fighters in the UFC that really attack with subs. So I had to go a little bit farther back in his career, in the RFA and beyond, to find what I was looking for. The RFA was the precursor to the well-established LFA, a very respected feeder organization for the UFC. It's there that I found the best example of Brian's submission defense on display in his title fight against Keani Koch, brother of UFC veteran Eric Koch and an extremely underrated fighter that unfortunately retired kind of early. This fight with Ortega was absolutely incredible and I would totally recommend that you go and watch it in full. Anyways, we see Koch attempt several guillotine chokes. Every single one of them was promptly addressed with simple grip fighting and basic hip raises to relieve the tightness of the strangle. These attacks were well-timed and very tight, but Ortega made it look easy whilst escaping them. Koch even managed to set up an omoplata from William's guard, which impressed the hell out of me because of that guard's trickiness and rarity. Ortega completely shut that down as well. There is something to be said about the amount of times Ortega was threatened by submissions in this fight. Regardless of how good his escapes were, it suggests a lack of submission awareness, or at least a blatant disregard for them. But I will say that most of these attacks seemed to me more of a result of sloppy wrestling rather than lack of awareness. We've seen some better takedown setups by Brian so far in his UFC career, and thus far has not had any solid guillotines attempted on him. That's what reinforces this theory for me. Other than one or two guillotine attempts even farther back in his career, there's really nothing else of note that's been attempted on T-City. From his very diverse arsenal of submissions that he's used so far, I can confidently guess that he has the knowledge and awareness to avoid and escape any of those techniques. So with that, he will receive the score of 9.25 for submission defense. Let's focus on some offense. But before that, a word from this video's sponsor. 
Big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Match Bets. Before I heard about Match Bets, I had never bet on any fights a day in my life. That's mostly because despite being heavily involved in the sport of MMA, I actually suck at picking fights. When I discovered Match Bets, I was intrigued by the fact that instead of betting against the house like you would with traditional sports books, Matchbets offers a player versus player model, which when all is said and done actually saves you money in the long run. You can still bet against the house though if that's more your style. Use the link and promo code in the description of this video to get a 100% match bonus for up to $5,000. Again, that's a 100% match bonus for using the link and promo code in the description. Go to matchbets.com today and again thank you to Matchbets for supporting the channel. Time for some takedown offense. Let me say first that there really isn't all that much diversity when it comes to this skill set. Single legs, double legs, maybe the occasional trip, and some snap downs from the headlock position, of course. But of those few techniques, Ortega actually does them quite well. Head on the outside single leg seems to be his most frequently used takedown, which also might be why he has had to fight off a few guillotines. He switches between that and the double leg seamlessly. Brian will use the cage to initiate a takedown sequence as well. Ortega isn't very good at grinding out a takedown though. The longer the exchange lasts, the less likely he is to finish it. That's because it all comes down to the setup for him. If he can nail the entry, there's a strong chance he lands the takedown. He has great timing and when accompanied by fakes and his striking setups, his wrestling is something to watch out for. I thought his wrestling setups were noticeably improved in the Korean zombie fight especially when it came to using his boxing skills to set up his grappling, and vice versa. The one thing that is unique to jiu-jitsu masters like Ortega is their propensity for jumping and pulling guard. For any other fighter, even good fighters, intentionally putting yourself in this position can be a death sentence. Yes, the guy on bottom can attack, but unlike in the sport of jiu-jitsu, where the guard position is advantageous for the bottom fighters, I like to think of it as like a 60-40 advantage for the guard player. That ratio is flipped in MMA because of the inclusion of strikes. In some cases, it's even more lopsided, like 20-80 or something. But with a style of jiu-jitsu like Ortega's, it's simply different. The ability to attack and sweep with such efficiency makes a guard pull not just an ace in the hole for when all else fails, it's also an extremely reliable way of getting the fight to the floor. While not technically a takedown, it is a method of grounding an opponent one way or another. And for Brian Ortega, that may be the catalyst for his eventual victory. So for takedown offense, I'm going to give him the score of 7.75. Get ready for some grapple boxing. This is a strong area of Brian's game. One of the key reasons for this being that he is a master of advancing position. Never content to sit in the guard, he looks for opportunities to pass and obtain the mount and back mount. Key positions for landing strikes from the top. This is unfortunately one of the things that works against him as well. Over committing to advancement has led to him getting reversed. He's completely lost position on more than one occasion because of the lack of control while raining down punches. The strikes he lands on top are devastating. Quick, precise shots lead to mass trauma. He has a real talent for opening up lacerations and forming contusions on the other guy. Sesquipedalianism is the tactic of using big words to talk over the head of someone. This tactic is used to make the person seem more intelligent than they actually are. It's commonly called being pretentious. He absolutely destroyed Tiago Tavares' face. And that fight is the best example of T-City's ground and pound in action. He did a number on Volkanovski's face and head as well. Most of those cuts were actually the result of elbows from the bottom. That's another area where Ortega shines. It may leave himself pretty open to shots, but my god, there's very few in the sport that can cause as much damage as he can from the guard position. His open guard is something to watch out for too. Brian will distract with sweeps and subs as he looks for an opportunity to upkick you in the face. His ground strikes are relentless and vicious from all positions, but his lack of overall control and disregard for his own safety while attacking is what keeps it from being perfect. So for ground and pound offense, it's going to look like a 9 out of 10. We come at last to my personal favorite, 
submission offense. I'm pretty confident in saying that Brian Ortega is the best submission artist we have ever seen in the featherweight division so far. He's not just a good jiu-jitsu fighter that is giving MMA a try. His style is specifically adapted for the sport of MMA, and it is for that reason that his setups and finishes work better at a higher level compared to guys who might be better at jiu-jitsu overall, but are less successful in MMA. As we saw earlier in the video, Ortega has the ability to set up his submissions from a standing position, snapping down into anacondas and darces, and jumping guillotines left and right. The best example of this being his victory over Cub Swanson, who is an excellent grappler in his own right, and did everything he possibly could to escape this. Cub actually managed to loosen the choke by fighting hands and remaining standing, hoping for gravity to do the rest. But Ortega's so stubborn and he was able to readjust the guillotine in midair and complete it there. Another instance of that guillotine choke at work is in his title fight with Alexander Volkanovsky, seamlessly transitioning from catching the kick right into a takedown and instantly floating to the mount position, already with a fully locked in arm in guillotine. This was without a doubt the closest we've ever seen Volk come to being finished. And I'm letting you know right now, if I ever make a video analyzing his grappling, that dude is getting a 10 for submission defense. I think if this were a high elbow guillotine, or just a pure version of the guillotine, that Brian would have been crowned the new champ that night. But as we all know, Volkanovski managed to just barely escape. That wasn't the only time he had Alex in trouble though. Brian called upon the superpowers of his namesake and applied a beautiful triangle choke from the guard. But again, the champ escaped. In my opinion, this triangle's failure had a bit more to do with how slippery it was at that point, and probably a bit of Ortega's exhaustion level as well. The anaconda choke that followed was very tight, but Volkanovski countered it perfectly, while making a show that it was ineffective. Three times in that fight, Brian Ortega had the best fighter in the division in dire peril. The techniques were ultimately unsuccessful, but in my opinion, Brian gained more respect and credit from these failures than he did from any of his previous wins. Let's talk more about Ortega's mastery of the triangle. They don't call him T-City for nothing, and you're going to see this technique literally fly at you from every position. He's been known to attempt jumping triangles, and he can apply a version of it from every other position you can imagine. I never get tired of watching his rolling triangle armbar from the mount against Diego Brandao. Let's not forget the other choking techniques he's able to get. The rear naked choke is always a danger, especially when he goes failed single to back take. So far I've only mentioned the submissions he's best at and most well known for, but he also has leg locks, shoulder locks, and arm bars in his arsenal. What's incredible and inspiring to me as a jiu-jitsu practitioner myself is how Ortega's style of jiu-jitsu in and out of the cage is just so vanilla. Taking inspiration from the very family that founded the sport and displaying what I imagine would be Hoist Gracie's style if he fought today. Most of his attacks are set up from the closed guard. Simple entries that are executed so perfectly, even when you see them coming, it's hard to stop them. As much as I enjoy watching this style, it pains me to say, I do have to take away some points for this category. The fact that he is first and foremost a submission hunter is actually meant to sound derogatory when I say it now. The same way calling a striker too much of a head hunter is a negative. Ortega fails on a ton of his submissions, and most of the time it puts him in a terrible position afterwards. He can get away with it most of the time by virtue of him being an overall better grappler and fighter most of the time. But against the top five of the division, it's not an advantage he's guaranteed. So with all this being considered, I'm going to give him the score of 9.75 for submission offense. When I tally up all the scores and get the average, it gives Brian Ortega the total grade of about 8.2 overall. When I get the average of the Discord scores, it gives him the total grade of about 8 overall. It seems for once I may have overestimated the skills of this fighter, according to what the general consensus apparently is. I was afraid I was being a little bit too critical, to be honest. Ortega's submission skills are without a doubt his greatest strength, but against the upper echelon of the sport, it also seems to be his greatest weakness. There's times where he seems to be grappling's version of a brawler. 
which leaves me plenty of things to criticize, but it's also what makes him so exciting and so dangerous. He may not get another title shot for a while, or even ever, but he's found a way to make his style maintain his top contender status and be competitive against the best in the world. So that just about does it for this episode of How Good Is Their Grappling. Make sure to check out the Patreon and channel memberships. We've got a lot of additional content on there. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.